Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, 10, 10, 24. Steve Cypress here. And before I get started, I just, uh, this is more uh, extremely on a personal note. Although I was thinking there is a business lesson in here, and that is simply that business, to me, is all about relationships. So today I'm telling the tale of a business relationship with someone I met at a business event uh, who became a dear uh, lifelong friend, and yet uh, lifelong has been significantly longer for me uh, than for him. So we're throwing it back, first of all, to uh, nearly four years ago now, where the New York Mets made a trade with the Cleveland Indians for the Cleveland Indians all-star shortstop Francisco Lindor, who became a Met, and over the last three years, has continued to perform at that all-star level, taking it to a new level this year as uh, going to be runner-up in the league MVP, most valuable player voting, and by far, obviously, the most valuable player on the Mets. Uh, I did not examine the statistics uh, before uh, creating this message, but just my gut feeling is over the past three years as a New York Met, Lindor seems to always start slowly and have a bad beginning to the season, but then he just turns it on and uh, goes absolutely bonkers. Uh, and so uh, I think it's happened all three years, which means the fans go crazy with the jeers and the jaunts and the taunts and the, you know, you suck and you're not worth the money and what the heck's going on and some kind of superstar you are. And I think he signed a contract for like three to $40 million or so for 10 years. So. You know, New York fans uh, not going to be too uh, too patient, <laughs> an understatement, with someone who's getting $34 million a year not performing at a top level or even an average level. So I think that's happened like every year, but then, you know, he heats up, which this year is beyond compare, and he's gone crazy, and he capped it off uh, as if that would be necessary with the most timely hit of his of the year, uh, with the Mets down one nothing in the fourth game of the uh, the division playoff series against the arch rival Phillies, he got up with the bases loaded, which the Mets had left the bases loaded twice earlier in the game and left two men on another time. They had eight men left on base for the first five innings of the game. There in the sixth inning, Lindor with the bases loaded just stepped up and they brought in a reliever just to face him who throws 100 miles an hour. And he was blazing the ball by him. And then suddenly Lindor just decided to get a hold of one and bang, zoom over the center field fence. Grand slam. The Mets stadium went absolutely berserk. So did Met fans like myself all over the country, all over the world. And uh, the Mets went on to cruise to victory and, and clinch the series, end the series, send the Phils packing home and send the Mets with a few days off. And in the... Uh, rare position of the earliest ones to win this division season with the other six teams all still playing while the Mets are just sitting there. And if you look at the uh, the official schedule, it says New York Mets versus to be determined. Like, haven't seen that before. The Mets are just in and good luck. We'll see who they're going to play. In fact, game five of the Dodgers and Padres, I think, is tomorrow to determine who the Mets are going to go to, have to their ballpark to play, start the uh, seven-game series in the championship series. But anyway, so when I think of Francisco Lindor, I always think of my dear friend Steve Underation, who uh, was born in a small town just outside of Akron, Ohio, which is less than a little less than an hour south of Cleveland, Ohio, and was an avid Indians fan and baseball fan. So, of course, we hit it off that way in our love for baseball. But, man, the way we first met is just so typical of Steve. Uh, there I was at a marketing conference. In fact, the first ever Dan Kennedy GKIC Super Conference that I ever attended, along with, I don't know, 800 other business owners and entrepreneurs from all over the world. And uh, I think I attended... 20 or 25 of those events, uh, but that one was the first. And so I was feeling, as many people do, and I know the feeling, because I'll never forget that feeling of 
their first meeting or conference or chamber of commerce meeting or networking group meeting or whatever it is, the first time in a membership group environment, feeling kind of out of place, kind of all alone. I didn't know anybody there and, uh, you know, feeling kind of left out, not part of the in crowd. Everyone was, you know, I remember on the breaks, everyone would leave their seats in the room, go out in the hall, get a snack, take a bio break, whatever. And there are groups of people, four, six, eight, two, three people all talking and hugging. Good to see you. What's going on? It's an annual event. So, you know, people are, but again, a networking or a local chamber might be a monthly event, but same thing. If you're brand new and it's your first one, you see people that are like, Hey, how you doing? Oh, papa, and you feel a little left out. Anyway, that's how I felt. And I remember on this break, I was eating a bag of chips and, you know, uh, a bottle of water. And I was going to say bucket of water. I don't think so. It was a bottle of water. And uh, standing off towards the side while everyone's having a grand old time. And Steve came up to me. I'll never forget it. And I forget exactly what he says, but it was something like, uh, tough to not know anybody, huh? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> How'd you know? As if, like, he had never been in his first conference. I mean, man. And so just great of him to come up. And he said, yeah, you know, this and that and blah, 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 and whatever and who and blah. And, you know, after that break, I, I, I sat next to him. And the next day, it was like a four-day conference. I sat next to him every day. And we now I had someone to hang out with on the breaks and to stand on line when there were lines for the lunches or the meals or whatever. And he would introduce me to people. And actually, when it came time for the GKIC organization to be looking for a new independent Dan Kennedy certified business advisor for the Chicago and the Northwest suburbs area. Uh, and I said, uh, somebody had, re you know, talked to me about, they just saw my name bad Chicago and said, Hey, you should check that out. I remember going to Steve and going like, you know, should I check that out? Like what? I and I'll never forget again. I don't know word for word, but Steve said to me, you know, I don't know anyone that's more perfect for that than you. You are the most no BS person, straight to the point. I mean, Dan Kennedy's nickname was the, the no BS guy. That's one of the trademarks of the organization. And he said, you're perfect for that. You're a teacher, you're a leader, you love teaching people and helping people, you're no BS, you're perfect for that. And man, once again, Steve was always on the mark. Uh, I started that, uh, invested a pretty penny into it and a lot of time, a lot of energy with my beautiful wife, Michelle, but a few years later, our chapter was the largest of 97 or 98 or so chapters around the world of the GKIC organization. So Steve was prophetic. Uh, we loved it. Still to this day, it's one of my fondest memories of all the things I've done in business because I do, my mom is a school teacher. I do love teaching and helping other business owners. My mom drilled a say, saying into me ever since I can remember, when you learn something, you have an obligation to teach someone else teach it to someone else. And so I just loved that. And uh, maybe that showed through or people just felt that uh, because that very quickly became the largest, the most successful chapter in the world of uh, Dan Kennedy. And so I pretty much owe uh, that to Steve as well. I might not have done it without his encouragement. I might not have ever attended another conference, the Dan Kennedy conference, or become a real, you know, part of that community without Steve Underation coming up to me and befriending me. Later on, I had him, I invited him to come speak to my Dan Kennedy group. He was an expert in trade show marketing, wrote a book on it, and uh, one of the top best-selling books on the subject was an expert in it. We had that in common. We talked about, because at the time, I was a, a sales rep for a Yellow Pages publisher. And he said, you know, that's real similar to me because people tell me all the time they're going to quit doing trade shows because they just don't work. And then I let them know the, you're just not doing them right. And I let them know the right system and uh, suddenly it turns their world around. Now they're making money hand over fist for trade shows. And he said, I said, man, it's the same thing I hear all the time with the Yellow Pages. The Yellow Pages doesn't work. I'm canceling my ad. And then I create a great ad for them and put together a whole campaign with the right headings and the right messages and the right ads, the right audiences. 
and they start making money hand over fist in the yellow pages. And so we, we had that in common and we shared marketing materials and lead gen materials and we always shared stories and, 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 uh, and conversations we had with our prospects and clients. We were really intertwined that way. And I remember the day that the Mets made that trade with the Cleveland Indians. Well, that was the star player on Steve's favorite baseball team. And so he called me and he said, you are about to be the happiest person on earth. I said, what do you mean? He said, you'll see what I mean when you see what Francisco Lindor does uh, to the New York Mets. And I'm getting a little choked up and it's not so, nothing personal, Francisco, but it's not because of Francisco Lindor. It's because of my great friend, Steve Underation, who less than a year after that conversation, Steve passed away at an extremely young age, younger than me, and this was a few years, three years ago, and uh, I think about him all the time, and now more than ever, I see Lindor, you know, actually being the savior of the New York Mets, being the MVP, being the leader of the team, being the heart and soul of the team, and a great thing Lindor always says, he never says, hey, we're just happy to be here in the playoffs or any of that nonsense. He's a winner. Uh, they say, how's it feel to win that pennant to get it to the playoffs? He says, I want to win it all. Well, how's it feel to win that first series? I want to win it all. I'm here to win it all. Like, how's it feel to hit that grand slam and beat the Phils and now you're going to the championship series? I'm here to win it all. Like, man. What a great message, what a great attitude, and I believe that permeates through the team and gets them focused. That's what he always says, we're just gonna do the right thing. We have respect for our opponents, so we're gonna come out and give it our all, give it our best, and uh, but we're here to win it all. And now that you know that, if you didn't know it before, you can see that, you can watch a replay on my Facebook homepage, of course, I had to put it there, and on YouTube, and I'm sure all over sports, websites and anywhere now, right now, because he just hit this Grand Slam yesterday. Uh, just watch his attitude when he hits the Grand Slam. It's as if he does that every single day. It's a Grand Slam, go ahead Grand Slam in a championship series deciding playoff game, like in front of the home crowd, which is going absolutely berserk. And he is just calmly, humbly trotting around the bases. No fist pumping and bat flipping and theatrics and you know, yelling at the pitcher and, you know, pointing at the whatever and the, none of this. Just, you know, yeah, that's that's what I do. That's what we're doing. We, we respect our opposition. He's not screaming and yelling and jumping up and down and m making fun of them or, you know, thinking he's better than them. Uh, he's just, he, they did their best. That pitcher threw a 100 mile an hour fastball. He did hit best. He turned it around and smashed it into center field. But what a humble, fantastic person Francisco Lindor is, just like my dear friend Steve Underation said he would be and how much I would love that. And man, was he right. And that's what gets me choked up is just thinking of Steve. I mean, I so many times this year, I, I just wanted to call Steve and say, man, you were right. And, uh, man, uh, Francisco and Lindor were loving it. And yet I, I can't. I can't call my friend Steve. I can't send him a text message or a Facebook message. Or I can't, you know, put a Facebook post up and tag him in it or, or see what he's up to. Because he's gone. I mean, that's it for Throwback Thursday. Uh, life is short. I don't care how young you are, how old you are, life is short. You just never know. And, it, and if you think that you're young, so ask ah, Steve, what are you talking about? You know, I got a long time before I think about moving on past this world. Uh, but how about people you know? Because no matter how young you were, including his very young kids, if you knew Steve Underation, I'll bet you didn't know that one day you'd be horsing around with him and the next day he wouldn't be there anymore. So you never know. 
Do not take any day for granted. Do not take any relationships for granted. Make sure that the people you love know that you love them and care about them and that you tell them that because someday it's going to be too late. So to my dear friend, Steve Underation, I really miss you, man. And thank you for all you've meant for me and for all you ever will. And I wish everybody had a lot of friends as good as Steve Underation was and still is to me. That's it, folks. Thanks for being here or watching on the replay. Hey, Coach Tony is here. Great seeing you, man. And I see your uh, comment on my Lindor Grand Slam post yesterday. Uh, I know you're a Yankee fan. We're both from New York. We're both around the same age. And you're like, how about a Subway series? Of course you want the Subway series. Because the last time that happened, I believe my beloved New York Mets didn't even win a game against your vaunted New York Yankees. So, uh, yes, indeed, Coach Tony, we are all blessed to still be here today. And uh, we had this kind of conversation, too, as well, recently. Like, I think that was in a private Facebook message. We are going to uh, hopefully, please, make the most of every day. Let your loved ones know you love them. And that's it. Be a good friend. Because I believe that's the first step to having great friends. Like the great Stephen Underation was to me. Thank you very much, Co Coach Tony. And uh, I'll catch everyone back here again tomorrow on Foundation Friday. Thanks for being here today and indulging my uh, uh, rambling personal message here. I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.